Well, I personally don't think they're going to get six weeks of warning. I think maybe they might be lucky if they get six days of warning, and more than likely it'll be two days of warning. And uh, they were told a, a month and a half ahead of time so that that way they'd have time to decide what they wanted to put in their bags. Mm-hmm. And uh, that six weeks of warning is nonsense. I mean, why would they give them six weeks of warning knowing that they'll blab the whole thing to everybody they ever knew prior to uh, being uh, backed up? I think I think they'll be lucky if they get one or two days of warning. They'll get called and say, it's time to go, and they'll have 15 minutes to get ready to head out. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, uh, you know, knowing how these guys operate, I don't believe that they'll get two days of warning. I mean, they might get one day or six hours or, you know, a half day or one day or two days. I don't think they'll get more than two days. I mean, really, do you? I think they have a good idea what the trajectory of this thing is, but I think we're not really going to see it until it's right up on our ass. Well, I'll tell you what. That would be my guess, that we won't see it until it's on us. But I will tell you one thing. We'll have some really good warnings if everybody's looking up and paying attention. First off, they'll notice red dust on the windshield of their vehicles. And at first, it'll be light dust, indicating that it's uh, uh, 10, 15 hours away. If they notice that the dust is real noticeable on their windshield, they can bet that it's in less than 10 hours away. If they have heavy red dust on their windshields, it's only a matter of hours away, and they'd better immediately take cover because they're out of time. It's too late to decide to load this or that up. Uh, I don't think that uh, I don't think there'll be a lot of warning, but uh, you know, when we were looking at it on the Hubble, this red dust field appeared to be going out at least as far as maybe two times the size of the planet. So, uh, yeah, you know, that means that it's probably a few hundred thousand miles going out into space around it, all the way around it, which means that just before it arrives, which will be a matter of hours, we'll start seeing red dust coming out of the atmosphere onto everything. Where And, of course, a vehicle windshield would be the best thing to spot it on because then you'll be able to see its true color and realize that you're seeing the red iron oxide dust from it. And that'll be probably between that and the earthquakes. And uh, I think probably uh, as, it, as it approaches, we'll start to hear the electromagnetic interference between it and us. Uh, maybe see bizarre events in the sky with the clouds and, uh, you know, uh, maybe, uh, uh, colors flashing around in the atmosphere. Uh, 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 there, there'll probably be quite a variety of warnings that it's approaching and that it's within hours of, uh, passing. It's gonna be a lot more, uh, you know, the CIA people I talked to said that they're expecting at least a, uh, 220 to 230 degree roll, maybe a little more. Uh, they fully expect the center of the United States to be at the equator when it's over. No, no, no. I'm saying uh, 220 to 230. That's what they're guessing. But then again, you got to remember. That's still a pretty good clip. Yeah. Well, you know, this thing's going to go by and give us a spin, and that's where we're going to supposedly stop. Uh, they told me they ran 10,000 case scenarios on the on shifting the planet upside down. They did it 10,000 times on the Earth. They tried different locations to see what they'd come up with, and it averaged out at 220 to 230-degree roll. So, you know, uh, I think probably uh, them knowing the trajectory isn't, I don't think that's a matter of question. I'm sure they know the trajectory. I'm sure they know the exact minute it's going to show up. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I've heard a lot of stories that I would only tell you in private about this because it's so far over the top, most people would go into immediate denial if they heard it. So, you know, the most I can say is that they better be expecting at least a 180 to a 220 degree pole roll when this happens. 
And as far as that bulge around the center of the planet, I got news for everybody. This thing is going to do a very fast roll, and that water is going to go everywhere. The Lord warned you. The oceans will roar from pole to pole. Is there some part of that nobody understands? The average depth? Yeah, what's the average depth of the ocean around 10, the world? 10,000 feet. 10, it's a it's about two two and a half miles. That's well, the average that's depth of the ocean. Although the depth does increase at the equator because there's spots where it's averaging seven miles deep, all rolling into the position of the South Pole. That means that the North Pole has got to go through that bulge before it can reach its final resting place. So we're going to have seven miles of water doing some serious washing around on the land. So let me let me ask you this. If we did a 220-degree pole shift, would that be an instantaneous pole shift, or would no. that be a... No, it's going to uh, be, as I understand, it's going to happen over the course of uh, uh, half an hour to an hour. And actually, they said 20 well, that's pretty, minutes. That's pretty instantaneous. <laughs> that's pretty fast, yeah. That's pretty uh, fast. Uh, we're going to see probably we're going to probably see a uh, uh, 400 mile an hour wind on the surface. Uh, we're going to see big time water splashing around. Uh, we're going to see earthquakes that are so bad that it'll set off every uh, volcano ridge on the entire planet. Every volcano ridge on the entire planet will be uh, going off. The tectonic plates will be being jerked apart by probably miles apart as the surface of the earth will be like a bowl of jello. It'll be flexing around so hard that every tectonic plate everywhere on the planet will open. The volcanoes will be shaken so hard that they'll start erupting. Uh, it's going to be one horrific scenario after another. But you're looking at hell on earth here. This ain't going to be no joke. This is going to really eliminate a lot of people because uh, either they didn't know about it or they didn't believe or, right. you know, whatever the case may be. The It's going to be a real shame for them because uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, when Nebiru rolls the planet upside down, it's going to kill uh, 4 billion people. And uh, that's, that's the first day. And uh, the rest, will survive on but very few survivors will still be around when the weather finally gets good enough to get a full growing season because they just uh uh were not prepared enough to make it and that's gonna that's it's gonna eliminate a lot of people i mean i wouldn't be under these underground facilities that uh all of these uh elite people think they're gonna hide out in because they're gonna be torn to pieces by the uh, flexing of the planet I mean, the crust of this planet is going to really act up big time. And uh, there won't be any survivors in those underground facilities. Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, I really don't think that uh, the survivorship of this will be real high because of the denial. The level of denial in this country is obvious by Department of Homeland Security planning to uh, fight everybody. Uh, the, the United States government has been terrorizing everybody around the world forever and ever. The churches are all in denial. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, the Chinese, they take babies and cook them up into stew and stuff. Uh, it's taken over this planet. And that's why I said about the churches being asleep. The churches have not oh. protested this at all. And uh, they're going to pay dear for having kept their mouth shut and been politically correct. This is the one that's going to cost them their ass. And one evil thing stacked on top of another. And all of these people that have been condoning all of this stuff, they don't talk about it. They just, you know, they own stock in the companies, and they think they're getting rich, and what they're actually doing is getting ready to die, and they don't even know it. I tell people all the time, guess what? You're probably not going to be alive this time next year, so uh, don't worry about what you're doing. Well, you know, one of his favorite subjects is to talk about giants, you know, because uh, our uh, our but military that, has uh, uh, ran into quite a few of them in caves in the Middle East over there. 
And yep. uh, they have came across several ones that were alive. They've even managed to capture a couple of them. They've had to kill a few of them because these guys aren't little guys. Uh, apparently they caught one recently that was, uh, I don't know, I guess about 14 feet tall, and uh, they had a hell of a time subduing him. Uh, they discovered that their small arms fire were not very effective against these guys. But, uh, you know, when I think about the size of that spaceship that I saw last year going uh, across the mountains here in Colorado, uh, I don't know how big these guys are. Steve Quayle says they're real big, that uh, some of them are as tall as 38 feet. Uh, this thing was big enough to where it could have had a few thousand of those 38 foot tall guys in it, and it would have been no problem because I'm telling you, this thing was at least a thousand feet in diameter, maybe more, and at least a couple of miles long. I mean, it was big. I don't have any trouble, uh, understanding that there could be races out there that are real big guys and there and 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 there's no way that you're going to be able to to fight these guys to kill them or anything uh you know if you think about what happened when was that about 15, 10 15 years ago that big one landed in russia right in the town square and uh these great big guys got out of it and were working on it while the whole town stood around and watched and went holy shit look how big these guys are and they were great big guys. I guess they were about 12 feet tall or something. And uh, they were working on their spaceship. And when they got it repaired, they flew off in it. But, uh, you know, they were, it landed right in the middle of the town square. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and everybody in the whole town saw it. And uh, it was a couple of mentions on the news about it, but not really too much. Mainly in the uh, little rag newspapers and stuff were uh, pictures of it. And a lot of people took pictures of it. They took pictures of the guys that were working on it, and they were great big suckers. So, you know, are there big guys out there? Yeah, there are. Well, the Bible says we're going to see all kinds of uh, stuff happening. And I can tell you, uh, these military people have been so far out of control for so long, uh, I think the American people would be terribly shocked if they ever got away from their vomit TV and started checking out what their government's been doing, they would not only be horrified, but they'd be in shock and horrified at the same time just how really far out of control these people actually are. And all of this stuff has been kept a secret because the American people are willfully stupid. And this is going to come home to haunt them. I can guarantee you there's going to be trouble on the horizon they can't even imagine. And I can tell you, I just the thought of uh, 14, 15 foot tall guys uh, dressed in military uniforms uh, 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 doing God knows what. I mean, I've always thought since day one that the pyramids were built prior to the last pole shift, and uh, and that they were stacked up probably by these big guys because there's really no other explanation for how stones that big got mounted up i mean you look at some of those things and the uh architecture and design and construction is just so far over the top and now we've got all of these uh ragheads over there in egypt talking about they want to tear them down yeah well, I was you know what that earlier today yeah this is just insanity uh they took out uh, their dictators around the world they've been taking out the dictators so that they could put in their dummies and uh, get their one world order thing going which is how they've got to do it they've got to take out all the uh, leaders are in every country and then and then place their Rothschild uh, dictators in in position and of course you know uh, uh, that'll bring in their one world order because they'll all work for the same guy but uh, uh, you know now they've got these morons down there in Egypt that want to tear down the pyramids. They want to do this. They want to do that. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know how they plan on doing it. You know, what are they going to put a nuclear weapon in the thing and blow it up or what? Because uh, they're sure as hell not uh, equipped to dismantle it uh, manually. They'll have right. to blow the things apart. Uh, they put. I was afraid the government would respond to the financial crisis by doing more of the same policies that caused it, which is more deficit spending, more cheap money, more central banking and central planning, 
And as a result, I think the U.S. economy is now poised for a much bigger collapse. I think that what's coming is a sovereign debt crisis and a currency crisis uh, that will make the financial crisis of 08 you know, look like you know the proverbial Sunday school picnic. This is something that's affecting the economy right now. Oh, absolutely. The fiscal cliff specifically is one of the major ways in which the slow recovery that we have could be completely derailed. You know, hard landing in China, uh, euro collapsing, problems in the Middle East, and fiscal cliff is probably paramount in those in, in that area. As a matter of policy, as opposed to an apocalyptic, and the most important price is interest rates, which have to go up. That is but no price. one wants to let them go up because the banks will fail. We have currently have no price integrity in any asset, and, and, and we're on the precipice of collapse. That's right. So this, this system is in collapse, and it's it's unbelievable, and most people don't even see what's going on. If you watch CNBC, if you actually pay attention to the U.S. media. Uh, they will always tell you there's uh, green shoots or it's uh, it's going to be a recovery. Mm -hmm. There's no chance of that. You don't think there are any signs of that? There's no, it's not possible. We're in the last days of this financial system in the U.S. This is Zimbabwe. When this, when it starts to collapse, it's going to happen very fast. If people don't start to wake up to what's going on, they're going to get hurt in this collapse. Uh, but this is where it's going now, that we have to now just get as far away from the U.S. and from the Western world. Uh, because this collapse is going to be messy. We've got to ask ourselves, why are the feds preparing for a war against Americans? Why have they bought now more than two billion bullets, all kinds of arms and ammunition, and now more than 2,700 tanks to patrol in America and keep order? We're told it's because they love us. We're told it's to keep the peace and to increase safety. But of course, we also know from Army documents, from Homeland Security reports, and a lot of other information information that it's really to occupy America and prepare for a civil unrest and a total economic collapse that will include gun confiscation. The rise of the warrior cop. So what do you mean? Our cops are getting increasingly like soldiers. They're being dressed like soldiers, they're being armed like soldiers, they're sent out in the streets told they're fighting war. And when you do that, uh, you know, you, we shouldn't be surprised when we see some of the results we've seen uh, with uh, the lead-in where they start treating uh, American citizens more like in enemy combatants than, you know, citizens with rights. Meaning, mostly you're talking about these SWAT team raids. Uh, yeah, uh, over the last uh, probably 20 years, there's been about a 1,500% increase in the number of SWAT raids in the U.S. Often it's 10 or 20 guys dressed in black, yep. heavily armed. I mean, they look like a military squad. I mean, they look like a, a you know, a, a, a unit that would invade a, a, a village in, in Iraq looking for <laughs> insurgents. Speaking of the police state which 9-11 ushered in, a 16-year-old is questioned by FBI, by FBI officials over a YouTube video that he uploaded. According to Justin Holman, a 16-year-old, after having uploaded a YouTube video which highlighted how America was slipping into a police state, he was visited by FBI officials. Police state? I want to ask one of them why they're here. What's that nigga? Oh. Police state? Fourth of July is our video. M16s. Because we don't live in a police state, sir. Martial law has not been established in this country. Keep it to the door, sir. Stand up. You're gonna kick my door. You kick my door down. You kicked my door down. Get on the ground. You kicked my door down. Get on the ground. No, you have no right to be in here. You have no right to be in here. You have no right to be in here. You don't. You have no right to be in here. Do not touch her. You are assaulting her. Yeah, I didn't open up the door. I went open. Now they're barging in my door for what reason? If what we saw in response to bombs was that, what would the response be in the wake of something bigger? 
is that we will see martial law take effect across the country. And more importantly, will people just accept it entirely out of fear? It was never meant that we would have this gigantic uh, police force from the from the federal government. I mean, we had martial law up there, FBI, and all these agents coming in, closing things down, going to people's houses. The police state is staring us in the eye, and it's getting uh, more and more uh, imposed upon us, and more and more imposed on society every day. More and more people are waking up faster and faster and faster. I think it could very well come to that, based on the things that are happening in the news, and we're seeing, you know, the collapse of our economy, so many different things happening. I have spoke, spoken with one federal agent, uh, and, and the information uh, succinctly boiled down is this. There is an event coming, Steve, in, in the very near-term future that is going to affect the United States of America to its very soul. That what is being planned is, as you and I are on the air tonight and what has been coming together in, into that old term, the perfect storm, uh, is, is literally a brewing right over our heads. It is and includes military maneuvers in the United States, military actions that are forthcoming and that will be so deep and so penetrating that the United States will never be the same. You have heard about the NSA spying on us all and think, eh, no big deal. I'm not a terrorist, so I have nothing to worry about. Think again. Because we are all potential terrorists, according to the American government. You can't just do these kind of things. And this one is not only repealing the principles of liberty, but it's, uh, it's destroying the Constitution. All of these invasions of our personal privacy under the guise of protecting us, they're just wrong. And it's no longer about keeping us safe. This is about keeping us safely under the government's eye. And it is clear the government is watching all the time. Oil looks higher. Gold looks higher, currencies look weaker. More about this uh, currency crisis you see uh, erupting. What does that assume about what's going to happen to the dollar? Well, it, it assumes that the dollar will utterly get destroyed and become virtually worthless. I don't know how that inevitably resolves itself. Um, it may resolve itself in some type of a, of a global currency crisis. And then if the global currency crisis unfolds, then inevitably you get, uh, I guess, an alignment under a, a global world government, uh, a new global currency, um, and a new world order. Growing debate in Washington following reports that some U.S. senators are now considering an immigration bill that would force all U.S. workers to carry around biometric ID cards. Well, it is an idea that is now raising some serious concerns among privacy advocates. Through the advancing market of biometrics, technology that uses physiological and behavioral recognition to identify people. A system touted as a national security necessity is being used to build a database where the biometric identity of millions of Americans will be gathered and stored. We really need to attack this in a comprehensive kind of way, not some knee-jerk reaction like sticking yeah. something in someone's finger to verify who they are right. and whether or not they can be employed in this country. Right. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security has been buying up massive amounts of ammunition. Americans are wondering why. Do you think this is a sign that they're preparing for some sort of mass civil unrest? If you look at what the Department of Homeland Security has been purchasing over the last year, uh, it comes out to like 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition, more than 7,000 fully automatic assault weapons, 2,700 MRAP type vehicles, and now drones. Those are instruments of war. Department of Homeland Security, who are they? We're going to fight a war against. Now, would I participate in assisting the feds coming in to states and going into homes and taking everybody's gun home? And I said, I would not be a part of something like that. And I said, one of the reasons I wouldn't want to get shot, because the American people are only going to put up with so much before they push back. And I said, if the feds tried to do that, disarm this country, I said, you would see an uprising and maybe the, the uh, uh, a version of the second American revolution.
how things work.